This is by far the dumbest and laziest movie of the franchise. What? Annoying, trash, lame, shit. Whales! This movie's dumb. Remember Star Trek? Which timeline? Remember Captain Kirk? Which Captain Kirk? Remember the Enterprise? Which one? With the continued pushback of Star Trek 4, it doesn't look good for fans of the Star Trek movies. It also doesn't help that the Star Trek series are in a flux too, with Picard ranging in quality from season to season, and new showrunners coming into different series to change things up. With all that said, we want to take a look back on the films in the Star Trek series and see where they all rank. This includes the original series movies, the next gen movies, and the Kelvin timeline movies. It'll be interesting to see how the films change over the span of 40 or so years, and the mood they'll have, as the movies have gone through different writers, different directors, and different companies over the years. Some things are for certain though, the Prime Directive's gonna be violated at some point, someone's gonna have a tragic death, and they're gonna overcompensate changing their style to fit a movie by having the most nauseating action you could think of. With all that out of the way, on to the list. Ten. 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 Number 10, Star Trek Into Darkness. Annoying, trash, lame, shit. Star Trek Into Darkness took the hopes of all the fans and rubbed them into dirt. Not into shit, mind you, but into dirt. The movie was just so careless with its understanding of the Star Trek universe and more specifically the characters in them. Benedict Cumberbatch did a mostly good job with his rendition of Khan, but everyone else just falls flat. That's the thing though about new universes and different approaches to characters. Yes, this is a different universe and a different film versus TOS and the TOS films. In this new universe, there are going to be differences, but it's one thing to improve a character like Lieutenant Uhura and another to fundamentally change a character like Simon Pegg's version of Scotty for instance. The real nail in the coffin is this movie's version of Spock. Spock is half human and half Vulcan. This means he has some human emotions. They explored this perfectly in Star Trek 2009. Spock and Uhura in a relationship is something interesting and different. It's a bit of a stretch, but it's neat. What Spock isn't is a rage-filled psycho who starts wailing on people when he's mad. It's such a fundamental misunderstanding of the character that it drags the movie down. Plus, all that destruction and mayhem just cheapen the movie to the point of being unsalvageable. 3 out of 10, there are worse movies out there. 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 Number 9, Star Trek IV The Voyage Home This is by far the dumbest and laziest movie of the franchise. There were rumors that Laird Nimoy held the company hostage, requiring that he direct movies or he would not act in them. So he turned this one into a comedy. A comedy of errors, wah 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 wah. While still containing some of the warm nostalgia hits and sci-fi moments the series is known for, there are just too many problems and inconsistencies to leave out. You mean to tell me that, in the 23rd century, a probe approaches Earth undetected until it's too late and no starship is able to stop it? With thousands of planets, thousands of ships, and billions of scientists and military people, no one in Starfleet can come up with something to stop this probe or disable it? But, for some reason, three people in a Klingon warship back on Vulcan can not only hear the signal of the incoming probe, but also interpret the signal to be whales killed off two centuries ago. Also, this Klingon ship can go back in time. Why can't the Klingons go back in time? There are Klingon scientists, don't tell me they're just all brain dead war dogs who just want to fight, but at the same time it was figured out by Spock. Spock, if you'll recall, is a half Vulcan, and Vulcans are really smart. Wait a minute, isn't there a planet full of Vulcans? Why couldn't they figure out time travel? This movie's dumb. There's some cute fish out of water moments where the crew travel back in time, but this movie's really annoying. 4 out of 10, forgettable as hell with some bright spots. Eight. Eight. At number 8, Star Trek V The Final Frontier. The Final Frontier is the most damning example of direct democracy at work. Everyone, including the janitor at Paramount, had a say in the script and it stopped making sense. Kirk, Spock, and McCoy are camping when they are ordered to fly to the edge of Federation space to resolve a hostage situation. Well, Kirk talked to people in the original series, but he wasn't the negotiator. This sounded more like a Captain Picard story than anything else, but considering that William Shatner directed the movie, he could do anything he wanted. 
So then there's some bullshit about stealing a ship with a bunch of people on it, whatever. Turns out there's a double cross, and the man responsible is not just a Vulcan who embraces emotions, don't know how that works because Vulcans don't have emotions, but whatever, but he's also Spock's half-brother. What? What else has Spock been hiding? Is he a communist? A masked luchador? A guy who smokes so much that his teeth look like pieces of corn? So Spock bro does the Vulcan mind trick on a few members of the crew and takes over the ship, making them go to the center of the galaxy to find God. So Spock's been hiding a brother, and God has been a real person hiding in the middle of the galaxy. How convenient. Turns out God is not there, but instead some jabroni who was trapped there and needed a ship to leave. So Kirk figures it out, then there's some battle or whatever, then the guys get back to camping. The visuals were not great, the sets were dog cheap, it's just a poor film. The real question though, where did that 33 million dollar budget go then? Wonder if Shatner conveniently bought a couple houses after this movie's production. 4 out of 10, this is starting to look like the jumping off point of this franchise. Six. Six. What happened to seven? Just kidding. Sim. Seven. Seven. Number seven, Star Trek The Motion Picture. A member of our crew actually went to see the motion picture on opening night. Remember 1979? I don't because I'm not an old man. Anyways, there was a lot of anticipation for this one, as this was the first translation of the beloved TV series to the big screen. Safe to say our crew member was disappointed, I could see why. Star Trek The Motion Picture served as a rough homage to the style of slower, methodical sci-fi movies like 2001 A Space Odyssey and Close Encounters of the Third Kind. While those movies had distinct style and flair, the motion picture just kind of dragged on. There are some cool moments and the effect work is great for the time, but it lacks the atmosphere and the build-up of some other sci-fi greats. It's obvious as the film was directed by Robert Wise, who directed sci-fi classics like West Side Story and The Sound of Music. Hmm. Also, what's up with the uniforms? I'm sure the cast appreciated having to wear these loose clothes or those stuffy uniforms they had in the series, but it just doesn't feel right. 4 out of 10, there's a good movie in here, but it's cluttered with all that V'ger stuff. Number six. At number 6, Star Trek. 2009 brought forth a fresh start for Star Trek fans. After the TOS movies fizzled out and the lackluster next-gen movies, J.J. Abrams took the helm of creating a new Trek film series, as well as a new timeline too. Things are great. For now. Star Trek 2009 is a solid movie, not good, not bad, just okay. The J.J. Abrams style is in full effect here. Unlike something quaint like Super 8, where you have the balance of calm character moments and intense visuals, this movie feels like JJ got to crank the shit out of his lens flare usage and really go to town with the shaky cam. Eric Bana provides a villain of the week level performance here, so he's kind of a low light for this movie. Chris Pine is almost there with his Kirk performance. He's not as quick or smart as Kirk, but he's got the swagger and the brashness to him. It gets annoying sometimes, but then Zoe Saldana shows up and then you forget what you're annoyed with. Everyone provides solid to good performances. Saldana's take on Uhura is refreshing given that she didn't really have much character earlier on. Ultimately, it's a fine start with the hope to reimagine the franchise in a new age and with a fresh vision. It just sucks that it all came crashing down soon after. 5 out of 10. Before we get to number 5, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Five. 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 <laughs> well, five. Number five, Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Another one that our crew members saw in the theater. This time though, it was actually entertaining. After the events of Wrath of Khan, spoilers by the way for anyone who hasn't seen this stuff that's 100 years old, the Enterprise crew looks to recover Spock's body and return it to its home world. Doc Brown is a Klingon who orders that they kill Kirk's illegitimate son, which is fine because he's super annoying in this one. The movie is a bit predictable, but you're along for the ride. It's a nice adventure where we get to see the now middle-aged crew in full force as they maneuver all sorts of characters and conundrums. 6 out of 10, on its own it's a below average sci-fi adventure, as a part of the movie series it builds on the past perfectly. 4 4 4 4 at number 4, Star Trek Beyond. Wow, if they just would have done this earlier, things could have been a lot different. 
new director, new writers, new feel all together. It's a fun reset button for the loud and annoying movies that preceded it. You've got action and wild moments, sure, but those moments are paced very well and paired with nice character moments and a story that feels like an expanded adventure from the original series. Idris Elba is a villain of the week, sure, but at least he's just a little bit more fun than what Eric Bana was doing. Does the dialogue come off as bratty or obnoxious at times? Yeah, but we'll take that any day over Angry Spock. It's a perfectly good adventure movie that provides some fun for a franchise that desperately needed some fun. We just hope that if they end up doing a fourth movie, and that's a big if, it's a movie like this with inventive moments and neat things happening. Six out of ten though, it's pretty good. I'm going to count to three. Three! Three. 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 Number 3, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan If you ask most people, they'll say that Wrath of Khan is the best of the franchise, hands down. We're okay with that, but have some reservations. This movie starts the trope of disgruntled Superman type getting revenge on Starfleet. Khan, while iconic, is this uber being who's strong but smart and has a grudge against Starfleet for what they did to him and his people. At least here, he's entertaining and provides some great moments. Plus, he's got those cool worms he sticks in people's heads. Much like other Star Trek movies, there are some tech inconsistencies though, like the fact that a planet can just blow up and no one notices with all their fancy 23rd century technology. This movie is quite steeped in melodrama as well, especially with, spoilers, Spock sacrificing himself and the ensuing needs of the many line. However, this plays into the best strengths this movie has. With the established lore and concepts of Star Trek, you have the chance for great character moments and compelling drama with characters you really care about. We give it 6 out of 10 just so we can hear Kirk yell, Two. 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 Number two, Star Trek Generations. 1994's Star Trek Generations was very satisfying to any Trekkie because they very nicely tie the cast and story of the original series with those of the next generation, hence the name. Sure, it's probably one of the first instances of a franchise just shoveling a bunch of stuff that the audience already knows into a movie as a nostalgia pop, but it's still nice. In this one, Kirk and Picard have to work together to stop this evil scientist from destroying a star. Where the movie lacks in tension and pacing, it makes up for with great effect work. No doubt having ILM on board had a lot to do with that. It's also nice to see the two captains interact. It can come off as a bit fan servicey, but this was before the Star Trek franchise milked 20 plus years of content off TOS and TNG. It's a good watch for what it does for longtime Trek fans and as a good start for the TNG gang as they start making movies. Let's hope it goes well. Oh wait. 7 out of 10, pretty good. Before we get to number 1, here are some honorable mentions. Star Trek 6 The Undiscovered Country, Star Trek Insurrection, and Star Trek Nemesis. Undiscovered Country is just really sad. Everyone's so old. You can tell that half of the cast is so tired of being on that god deck for so long, it just feels like an opportunity for Shatner to really flex his stuff and inflate his ego. As far as Insurrection and Nemesis are concerned, they're just a couple of unforgettable movies from a franchise that should have ended at the TNG finale. But at the same time, if it ended there, we wouldn't get our final pick. Alright, ready? One. 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 At number one, Star Trek First Contact. First Contact is the best film in the most prolific sci-fi film franchise. It does an excellent job of tying the history of the series back to 1967 with the terrifying Borg of the 24th century. It starts off with the Enterprise chasing the Borg, shocker. They follow the Borg to the past, with the Borg's plan being to stop humanity from achieving the technology needed to join Starfleet. Prime Directive be damned, Enterprise has to stop the Borg and go down to Earth to help one of the all-time that guys, James Cromwell, and the mom from Scrooge, Alfre Woodard. This is a really great conglomeration of what great Trek can look like. Much like Wrath of Khan, it can get very overdramatic, but First Contact never feels cheap. 
It's just a collection of some really fun acting performances from Patrick Stewart and Brent Spiner, as well as a story that'll get you cheering and yelling at the screen. It doesn't quite reach the status of becoming a great sci-fi movie, as it is obvious that the characters are running around sets. The camera work is very rudimentary, plus while the story is fun, it's not a roller coaster ride like Star Wars or some other sci-fi adventure film. Despite all that, this is probably the best Star Trek movie. Picard and Riker geeking out over Cromwell's ship is funny, the Borg Queen's a great heel, there's some actually funny comedy moments in this one too, plus the Picard arc is pretty convincing. With that said, a member of our crew wanted to give this 9 out of 10. They aren't, in fact, doing heroin, so that's how they actually feel for some reason. I'd give it 7 out of 10, so we'll just round it out to 8. This list is messy as hell. We're sure this isn't a hot take at all when we say that Star Trek as a whole has produced better television than movies. In terms of original stories and narratives, TOS and TNG are better than any of the films ever got close to. Sure, there are some bad episodes and some dated effects, but First Contact is the closest to getting to something really entertaining and fun. Will Star Trek 4 ever happen? Will Paramount get their shit together and manage this franchise properly? Will we finally get away from making shows Shows and movies based around only TOS and TNG? Probably not. Thanks for watching everyone, we hope you enjoyed our list. Please be sure to check out some of the other lists that we have at the end of the video. Like and subscribe, as well as comment if you have an idea for a video we should do. Thank you again and have a great day.